pistons and rods. Uh, pistons are from several different sources. There's better ones and there's worse ones. I'll let you form your own opinion about that. Uh, most all of them, the wrist pins are a little too snug. You want to be able to uh, have that wrist pin slide in and out of there without with just a little bit of resistance. Generally, if you're going to assemble your engine yourself, uh, chances are you've took your block to a machine shop and he'll have what's called a pin home with Sunnen or several different brands. Make sure that you take the pistons, one so he knows the size to bore the holes to, and also have him check piston wrist pin fit uh, and he'll drop a drop it on his home and, and, and clean that out for you. Because if they're too snug to start with, when this starts getting heat, it's going to seize up even further. And remember the way a Model T is, the rod locks onto the wrist pin, so the wrist pin is floating in the piston. And if this gets warm and hot, it'll seize up. I've seen them where they're absolutely black. Okay, so a wrist pin fit is, is really critical. The rod clamps on to the wrist pin, so the wrist pin is floating in the, in the piston, and if, uh, if this is too tight, uh, it'll heat up and cause the piston to seize on it, which is going to give you a lot of the scuff marks that you'll see because the piston now won't center. It, it won't, it'll cock down one side and cock going up the other, and it'll just gall them up really bad. I've seen pistons galled bad enough to where they seize the engine. I've also seen pistons where you look down in here and it's brown black from all the heat. So have your uh, machine shop uh, check wrist pin fit. It should just be a slip through. And we're going to uh, mark our pistons with the weights. This one's 710 grams. Whoa. This is 708. Pistons run pretty close. Uh, again, depending on who you buy them from. That's 708. I want to check this 710 again. Uh, it is 708. Okay. So, so far all three of those are weighing the same. That's a good thing. And that guy isn't. This one goes out 712 grams. So we got one piston that's a little heavier than the others. Rods. There's a lot of school of thoughts here. But these rods should all be within a few grams of each other. Uh, 612, 610, 612, 610. So I got two that weigh out 610 and two that weigh out 612. Uh, a lot of people would just go ahead and install this and, and, and get on down the road with life or never even look at it. You can balance the rods and you can balance the pistons and make everything work out to be the same weight. A uh, couple of schools of thoughts on that. Uh, at least get the reciprocating weight, this part, uh, all the same because this is rotating around inside the crank inside the engine there so you can remove a little material and I've only got a couple of grams here so it wouldn't be hard to 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 get the rods total equal weight uh, we don't have a we don't have a set of balancing scales here and I think that's probably a segment that's 
needs to be done on its own but uh, you can get a, 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 a set of a scale to where we could measure the big end and measure the light end, the wrist pin end and work on these rods to where uh, all of the tops weigh the same, all of the rotating weights weigh the same and by doing so then all the rods will weigh the same. Uh, just because I've got two grams here I don't know where the two grams is. Is it on the top? Is it on the bottom? So if I had a set of those, if I had my scales over here we'd go ahead and go through that process and balance this out. Uh, for the sake of our presentation here at this time I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, most guys at, their, at the garage, most of you are probably just going to go ahead and take what you got and bolt it together. And that's probably okay. After we've weighed everything, we need to balance all this and we'll insert that. Next, mark my rods. I'll put a dot. This is number one and I'm going to get me a dot up here on the top side and then I also want to make sure that I mark the, the direction that the rod cap goes together. It's important uh, that once we take this apart uh, if we don't keep them exactly in order at least we got reference marks to be able to put the right cap the right direction with the right set of shims back on the correct rod. So we're just going to hurriedly go through here and mark them one, two, three, four. I'm going to mark them all the same direction, which I didn't do. So I'll just fix that. First thing I want to do is make sure that I got our rods uh, indexed so I can put the correct cap back on the correct rod in the right relation. So I've just put a couple of marks on it. I've identified this one as number one rod and I've put a little dot on my cap. Now I can separate them and if I get them out of order I can get them back the way they're supposed to be. Uh, it's important when you separate your rod to support it. So we've got a little set of aluminum soft jaws that we made up and I'm going to go through and do all the rods the same way This is the first rod that I'm doing. I'm going to knock it, take the caps off of it, pull the cap off. I'm going to get my shims out of the way, keep everything in order that I've taken it apart. And with a Babbitt knife, when they've machined this, because the uh, shim pack is in there, there's a little bit of Babbitt that you just got to come in here and just take a knife doesn't have to be a Babbitt knife, it can be a pocket knife, a razor blade, but you want to clean off what's a little proud from that machine work. care should be taken so you don't uh, get in there and clobber your nice babbit. These uh, caps are uh, X'd. Uh, we're going to put a set of dippers on it here in a few minutes. I'm going to get rid of all the little boogers. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. Probably say the knife won't just slide over it. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of babbit that's got proud. Now my knife will slide over. So we'll do all four uh, rods that way. 
get them cleaned up. I like to go ahead and push stuff back together the way that I've got it indexed. Don't have to be tight. This is loose. We're going to take it all back apart. And we'll do the other three rods just the same zippers on it. The rods were X'd and now we need to drill a hole in there in order for the oil to be picked up by the dipper and help lubricate the rod. Uh, dippers weren't common to Model T's. Maybe some of the late 27 engines had some dippers on them. Uh, but uh, back in the day I think they used a, a Chevrolet a dipper they found it would work. And a lot of times this is just too wide. It doesn't fit down in there. There's a lot of uh, space uh, between where it's going to go. So I like to just go to the bench grinder and just grind me a relief in it. The, the early Chevy ones, they were relieved out. And it's about oh, an eighth of an inch. Just go in here and just grind off. Don't grind so far that you knock the spot weld off of it. But just kind of clean those up to where it'll fit into that cap better. So we'll take our dippers to the grinder and we're going to cut them to where they'll uh, seat down on here better. Now it fits all the way down into our cap to where when we clamp that down it's it's in better contact with the area in between the reinforcement ridges so I'll do I've got my first cap set up here and uh, you can do this on a drill press, you don't need a mill, uh, you could even do it by hand. But where the X's are, I'm just going to pick out what's center and drill a 3 16 inch hole, plumb through the babbit, through the cap, uh, to get us for our oil hole. <laughs> So I've got our hole drilled where our X's intersect, so oil will make it up in there and we'll clean up my burrs here after I get all the caps done. A little burrs on it, so I'm just using a rotary file and a hand drill and just come in there and knock the burrs off of it. And you can do that on the Babbitt side also. And that just cleans off anything that the drill bit did. <laughs> 